Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome. This is uh, State Building Co. Council IBC Technical Advisory Group for July 19, 2024. Could we please open with uh, roll call? All righty. Uh, for the chair primary, Todd Bayreuther. Here. For chair alternate, Roger Haringa. Here. Thank you. For architect primary, Joe Mayo. Here. Thank you. For the alternate, Chef Fortaleza. Give me one second. I'm going to get my uh, participants list up just so I can review that too. And I'm not seeing Che in the room here today. Uh, for building official primary, Tim Woodard. I'm not seeing him in here. Uh, for the building official alternate, Steve Belzac. I'm here, Dustin. Thank you. For fire services representative, Lance Dahl. Uh, Lance, you just Roger, logged in. Are you here to uh, cast your presence vote? Nope. Yeah, here, I'm back. I'm sorry, my uh, computer windows defaulted and I'm back up on my uh, iPad. And for, uh, for cities and counties, primary Hoyt Jeter. Yep, I'm here. Thank you. For affordable housing representative, primary Todd Sullivan. Not seeing him in the room today. For general contractor developer primary Bill Mybush. Present. Thank you. And for manufacturer supplier primary Brian Horseman. I'm here. Thank you. For structural engineer primary Joshua Mergens. Not seeing him on the attendees list. For the alternate Trent Tenney. Also not seeing in our attendees list. And for the persons with disabilities or accessibility expert, Michael Shaw. I don't see him in here today. And then for building owner, property manager, primary, Brett Conway. I don't see him in our attendees list. Uh, general public subject matter expert, primary, Michael Barth. I'm here. Thank you. For the alternate, Leah Summer. Present. Thank you. State Enforcement Agency Primary, Paul Clark. Not seeing him here today. And Fire Protection Engineer Primary, Andy Leonto. Here. Thank you. Yeah. One, two, five, six, seven. We have one over our quorum number, so we are good to go. Okay, good turnout for Friday afternoon in the summer. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll um, keep going with item one. Anyone from the public like to be recognized for the meeting? Yes, uh, Patrick Hanks here with BIAW. Okay, welcome, Patrick. Thanks. Okay, hearing no others, um, we'll move to item two review and approve the agenda. Can we hear a motion to approve, please? I move to uh, approve the minutes. This is Bill. That's for the agenda. Or I'm yep. sorry for the, for the agenda. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, aye. Any opposed, nay. Okay, agenda is approved. Item three is review and approve minutes from July 2nd. We hear a motion to approve the minutes, please. Make a motion I'll to move. approve the minutes. Thank you, right? Second that. And second that, Andy, thank you. Okay, any discussion or proposed edits to what's in front of you? If everyone's had a chance to read that. Um, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any, 
Any opposed nay? Okay, minutes are approved, thank you. Um, item four would be public comment for items not on the agenda. Would anyone like to address the tag? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll get to the main order of business here, item five. Uh, Dustin, do you wanna lead us? Please. Yeah, yes, I do. I am um, waiting on my document to open up here. It's uh, given me some slowness. I saved it to the uh, computer here at the house and it is still giving me issues on wanting to open up. So give me just a moment on that while it figures out what it wants to do. There we go. All righty. So you should be seeing the report as uh, distributed out to everybody. Um, this report is uh, developed off of all the other work that we've done so far within this group. Um, so the content is the same with some minor um, changes in formatting and things like that. Uh, the big difference that you'll see across this report is that there's code sections uh, there with the, all the different line items uh, so that you don't have to flip back and forth between the codes to or between this document and a code book to see what we're actually talking about here. So uh, as far as a way that I'd like to review this one, uh, I make the offer that we could accept this report as is right now, make the meeting short, but uh, we didn't do that at the fire tag. Um, and the way we ran that one is I scroll through it. And uh, if we have anything besides maintain the existing amendment in the existing amendments report, uh, I'll speak on it. Um, if you guys have a spot that you'd like to jump to, I can go ahead and jump to that now or we can get to it as I scroll through the whole document. Uh, we got about 102 pages here to go through. And um, on the significant changes report, uh, I only paused to speak on the ones that identified that we uh, think we needed an amendment for the change in the model code. Um, so with that one- um, I'm Hey, gonna... hey Dustin. Yes, sir. I think that's a good idea. I mean, if I may interrupt, um, maybe we can, we can pull everyone to see, make sure everyone's comfortable that they've um, had enough time to review it, uh, or if anyone's opposed to that, uh, let's let's maybe just have that discussion real quick, and okay. then see if there's a you know if that's a good strategy or if there's a a, a better or a other other proposed proposal. And core. Okay. Um, so, would you like to, one like to speak to it? The one thing I I would this is Hoyt. Sorry. Yeah, you, you have this like for example, I was reading this non-structural component which says in ASC 7, 13.1.3, and that has importance factors for life safety equipment and things like that. What's surprising on that, since you already, since the building code already tells you to go to ASC 7.2, and it already tells you to go, and then the structural stuff has to be put on the drawings, I'm kind of trying to figure out, I think the I codes pretty much already does this it didn't in the past but um i'm trying to figure out i mean this is this is something that's um pretty consistent now in asc when you get you the, the i codes kicks you into asc 7 already so you're already required to do this some of these items i'm curious I, mean, I don't care if you keep it it code already requires it though so you know so hey, you're you're speaking to a specific case here but also sounds like a more general just more general, more general. Yeah, we approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I would bring this up just because the one's in front of everybody. Um, you know, because I'm in the structural codes all the time. And at one time this wasn't in there. That was the issue. Um, and now that we're adopting the, you know, that that was that's the way I understand it. I don't understand why we have to keep keep something in there that's already addressed in the code. In the so, wait, so building off of this this example, so we have, you know, 
if if our goal today is to get to say 102 pages of of documents for you know a recommendation of approval um what are our ground rules and how we want to address things that we might uh see like this or just general comments we had it's something that you you know we still would support recommendation knowing that we want to come back and potentially clean this kind of thing up right yeah that's that's, that's kind of my question i mean I, i'm fine keeping it in there but some of this stuff we've taken to the national code that's that's all i'm curious about and dustin probably have a good good call on that or maybe someone else does so so on something like this that you know we so we went through chapter one and all the chapters as a preliminary review after um, the volunteers uh, went through these. So if if it's a section that we think is no longer necessary and, for example, the 107.2.9, um, if the the uh, recommendation for the tag or from this group is to repeal the amendment because it's no longer necessary, so I'm I'm looking in the 2021 code and like this one specifically, it doesn't necessarily amend an existing code section. It adds a code section in here if I'm if I am reading what I got in front of me correctly. And um, so if if it's no longer needed and it's pointed to somewhere else, um, and we want to potentially remove it, we can change um the recommendation here. That's the colored tabs in here. Uh, that says keep existing amendment, or if we want to repeal it or modify it, um, we can change the the content of the recommendations for certain sections. Um, in in the the hope is not to necessarily go in here section by section or chapter by chapter. Even um, I'd like to review it, and if we have a change we want to make, uh, go ahead and make the change in these last three columns here. Um, the, you know, the staff recommendation one was kind of just put in there as a, if a staff member's working on this versus a volunteer, uh, we'd put content in there. Uh, you'll notice throughout the, uh, uh, document that the other comments section will have some other, uh, kind of information that colors why we're, uh, have the repeal keep, um, as modified or keep as is, uh, recommendations in here. And so, uh, we can take the time to modify those. And I see Josh has his hand up. Um, sorry to interrupt, just letting you know for form purposes, I'm I'm here now. I was running late today. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Josh. I think uh, uh yeah, so here here's where I would look at this on this non-structural components, right? Which is just kind of interesting. Everything that you're asking to put in here is structural. Um, so if I was gonna put it, they have they have um structural documents already in chapter um, 16. And to me, I would have put 107.2.9 in chapter 16, not in chapter 107.2.9. But that's just, um, I mean, that would be the only change. If you're going to make a change, I was wondering if it's possible. I mean, what do other people think? Um, because what they did specifically is they wanted to do the responsibility of where it is and some of the non-structural components, you know, is more of a structural. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, I it, to, to be honest, you accomplish the same thing. You accomplish the same thing. So I just, just ignore it. I mean, it, I, I'm very familiar with it and I know it needs to be in there, but I was just curious. Okay. Uh, Hoy, I kind of agree that it would be less likely to be overlooked as uh, someone who does structural. We don't spend a lot of time in chapter one. We kind of go through it when the new code cycle comes out and put chapter one largely away. Um, it's maybe not the biggest deal in the world, but I do think we would see better compliance if this was located in a structurally relevant chapter. Yeah, that was my experience too, because you don't know how many times I've written this comment um, in my in my code review here at the city of Tacoma. I'm like, and to me, this seems like this should be in chapter 16, not in chapter 107.2.9. Gotcha. Uh, Roger? Well, I just wanted to you know, the where we're at with this report is we have gone through them. And um, when we went through chapter one, we decided in this particular case to keep the existing amendment. Um, if you go down to the next page, there are just for an example, there are um, custodial care. It says repeal existing state amendment because the model code language is identical. So I want to avoid us going back and redoing work that we did previously. Um, 
However, if there is, and so then going back up to the non-structural components, the current, and, and Dustin, you may need to correct me, but I believe that the current, um, the, the current amendment would be in chapter one. Would this be a code proposed change that we would we would need to make a, a change proposal to move this? Correct. If if we wanted chapter, to right? move this, if we wanted to move this to a different location, a proposal to move it would be required. Um, as far as what we got going on is if it's if it's something we want to consider moving, I I, I want to uh. uh I guess applaud the uh, Rogers notion of like maybe not repeating the work we've done on chapter one. If it's something that needs some more work, let's make a quick note of it and move through. We've got a lot to do today uh, in yeah. order to make the community can, happen. Yeah. Can I just say what this is? If you look at it, it says 107.2.7 is the administration. It says the construction document shall provide information specified in section 1603. So what happens in my experience Everybody goes to 1603 to see what's supposed to be on the on the um, construction documents. Yeah. I got to. I write this comment. You don't know how many times I've written this comment that they have to do yeah. this. Um, and so that's all I'm saying is a real simple thing would be just move that one into Chapter 16. It would make it would make a lot of, I think, design professionals because this is all structural design designment requirements. This is not um some of the other administration because it already says in in the in the administration section 107 again if you look at it 107 says the construction shall be provided information specified in section 1603 1603 you throw this in there it's it's a minor change it's not anything yeah. big but that's okay it, 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 yeah. yeah i just think that we should you know there's a comment that dustin added and i'm sorry i'm looking on my phone but um you know consider Moving it to chapter sixteen, I think that that's a great comment. We we identify that and we flag it and say we need to continue to work on this, and it may make sense for us to add it to the sixteen chapter sixteen. So, all right, so, I don't want to waste any more time on that. that, that that's all. Quick question. No, so I, I want to read the other discussion stuff. here, and I think Michael, you know, I'd just like to know if we established how we're going to do this today, and are we going to have this. You know, level of discussion on each one of these, or have people are people comfortable that they've reviewed these uh, this proposal so that we can we can take action on it today? But obviously, dig deep on any things that people have concerns about. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I uh, Roger touched on some of it too. I don't think any of us are here today prepared to relitigate all of these items, and I don't think that's the, really been the charge of the tag right now for you know for our focus right now it's if the existing amendment doesn't you know isn't addressed in the new code then we keep the existing amendment and i think that's you know we're not here to change those if if that's not the case if anybody wants to change those then that's subject to applying for a code change mm -hmm. you know that's no. a different setting so i think yeah but you know, th that's what i'm trying to say that this is already in the code. 107.2.9 is already in the code. You actually get there anyway. You don't even need that amendment. You will get there. Uh, but that, I, I don't think we need to relitigate this. I don't think we need to argue the merits of these. If this neat belongs in chapter 16, then somebody ought to make a code change proposal to move this to chapter 16. It can't, I don't think, I mean. It, and and I would say, you know, we don't. With three or four. Yeah you know okay. pieces per page that's not what we're trying to to do yeah. today right and but that, i would say keep the existing amendment i would say no you don't need to keep the existing amendment it's already in the code uh, uh, that wasn't the discussion and again it, we're, we're trying to, it, it, yeah it is because it, that's and no no that's just that's right other now. comments consider okay no no what it says here we have what well, we're talking about keep the existing amendment and I'm saying you don't need to keep, keep the existing minutes it's already in the code. Wait, maybe you, maybe if I understand this correctly, though, the, the difference here is that is it a, because of a change in the model code that we would be reconsidering now? Or I think what Michael's arguing, to correct me if I'm wrong, is if it's not because of a change in the model code, that would be a, a formal yeah, proposal. It, 
it was a change in the model code and it's in the standard. So it's already in there because it says already other items that have to be um, required to be put on there. Um, this is just saying the 1.5. The problem is the 1.5 factor changed last code cycle. And that's why they put it in there. They don't need it anymore. We've already gone through a cycle of it. It was more because they changed it in the standard that this was required to be done. And so they put it in the code. You don't need it anymore. It's already in the standard. You don't, you don't need this in our, um, in our state amendment code anymore. The, the, the IBC already addresses this without putting this in there. So, okay. so in this case, this is an example where putting that yellow consider relocating to chapter 16, we've discussed it today. We, we, no, we my, mine, mine was as if you keep it, I'd relocate it to chapter 16. My vote, if we vote on this, I would say we don't need it. So, okay. So, I, I'm I'm trying to get through quite a lot of information here. So, without necessarily taking a roll call vote on this, is there any opposition if I change this to keep existing amendment as modified and uh, potential move it to chapter 16? Um, or do, is there, uh, I guess? support for just keeping the report as it is with a note here to consider relocating to chapter 16 because there's lots of different venues we could take as far as making a decision on this one we could change it to repeal existing amendment it's taken care of in chapter 16 we can move it to chapter 16 um there, there's lots okay. of different items and yeah so i'm going to make a motion i'll make a motion on this i make a motion to repeal this that's okay. not necessary anymore I'd like to continue my comment. I what I was trying to say was if we relitigate each one of these, this this isn't the time or the place. This no, no, that's wait, please. Yeah. Can I this was a discussion point when we did chapter one? And 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 it should that that's when that should have been brought up. That would have been the appropriate time. Right now, we're, this is a review. If we re try to relitigate each one, that we're never going to get there. And Hoyt, I'm I'm not disagreeing with the technical aspects of it. You know, if you think it should be in 16, then I would fully agree with you that it probably should be 16. What I'm saying is, for today, that's not the issue. Today is, you know, what was discussed in the, as we went through each chapter, and then you know what were the decisions. If you want to submit a code change proposal to move this from chapter one to chapter 16, I would be 100% supporting of, of that, that, that proposal. What I'm saying is today we can't do that or, or, or we'll never get anywhere. This isn't, the, my whole argument is that this isn't the time to relitigate each of these. And I think that's what Dustin's initial question really was is how are we going to move forward and if we try to relitigate each one of these we will never move forward yeah and yeah. what i'm saying mike is not that what i'm saying is this amendment doesn't need to be kept anymore so it already states it so do we have a second to your motion i would be willing to second but with with some caveat here I, I think what we're saying is we just need to change the comment to consider to uh we recommend it be removed right i don't know if we're saying it needs to be moved to chapter 16 if it's already included in the code yeah that's my motion just to remove it and i'm friendly with that we can change that it is I'm, I'm trying to keep this discussion on each specific session uh nice and concise because not, we've got 102 pages of an existing amendment report. I don't know how many pages are in the significant changes report, but then there's also the IEBC book to go over as well. So if we spend this much time on each thing that we have comments on, we're not going to finish the task at hand today. So there's a motion in a second to change this to repeal existing state amendment. Um, is is it appropriate to do a voice vote or should we uh, do a voice or do a roll call? Michael. Can I have discussion? 
Yes. I, I, I would speak to uh, opposing this motion simply, you know, not on the technical merits, but simply on the fact that I, I am overly cautious of us trying to eliminate amendments without proper con true consideration. And those considerations should be through the, the code change process of uh, submitting a code change proposal. Should not be because you know we don't like an amendment or any of that. That's that's. Uh, I think I've seen too many instances in the past where existing amendments have been been deleted without the proper consideration and 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 discussion. Again, this one on a technical merit, I, I support Hoyt's argument on a technical merit. I'm saying for today and for this motion, I don't think that any of these amendments that we that are not you know truly represented clearly and have gone through that process through our process through the last two months, uh, I don't think we should be removing them now without that real opportunity for thorough review. Can we do that on other ones though, Mike? We removed other ones. And what I'm saying is the code already has us. So yeah, it's not, it, it, we're not repealing it. We're not repealing it. But on the other places we've done in other places, if the code's already addressed it. Um, yes, we've removed we other did. ones so, when the code. Right. And so this one, right. Yep. But then that. let me finish. Let me, yeah. But this is specifically in the code already. So there, it, it, it's not, it's, you don't need to do anything. You don't even you need to move it to chapter 16. You don't need to do any of that stuff. Code already addressed this. And it's in the, it's in the standard. So. And chapter, um, so it's, it's it's not necessary anymore. So, so I, I would also speak to opposing the motion just on the the basis of not relitigating, kind of like what we've been discussing. When we had that detailed conversation in chapter one, it would have been great to maybe see where this is in the code and verify those things that you know Hoyt's bringing up now. And I just don't think we can do that for these items today. So I'm going to oppose any motion that's. That's similar to this style. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as chair, step in here and let's. If there's any other, we have a motion on the table. If there's any other discussion, let's have it. Otherwise, um, let's take a vote. But then I, I'd like us to move forward in a, in a different matter. Um, okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 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 I'm sorry, when I'm opposing, what is the opposing part? I, I, I didn't understand what their actual well, it, it, proposal well, is. It's your motion, and your, mo your motion is to is, is to make a change to this, but I, I'd like us to to try to, you know, um, to move I thought the motion and, was to keep the existing amendment. I thought no, that you was need the motion to remove it. Okay, remove it, yeah, the that's, the motion. So, that's the motion. Or, or yeah, just, that's the motion to move it. That I vote yay for that then. I'm sorry, I didn't vote this time. That's why. To, to move? No, to remove this completely, 107.2, the state amendment. Okay, please. I make a motion to get rid of the keeping existing amendment. We don't need it. Okay. I think I think we're probably all confused at this point. And I, I'm not voting, but I'm, I'm not prepared to take a technical kind of merit vote right now anyway. I, I think I agree with Michael and, and Tim that we, we need to move forward on, on what is presented to us. And my, my question to the, to the committee here was, or the tag was, have you had ample time to review what is presented in front of us and how would you like to most um, like quickly move through this, but you'll still have the chance to um, you know, make a final recommendation. We have three or four hours. We could extend, you know, obviously to multiple days, but I, I think I think we're beyond, you know, going through and 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 making significant changes here to the work we've done over the last few months. So um, if we'd still like to continue this motion, I, I think it needs to be restated because at this point, I don't, I don't believe I understand what the motion is. Yeah, that's what I couldn't. That's what I didn't understand what the motion is either. So. Or can we simply withdraw and try to move move forward with with the comment, and 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 let Dust, Dustin get through these? That like to make sense, and we have another opportunity to approve the final document, right? So. Maybe yeah, absolutely. This is just the recommendation moving forward. We've done a significant amount of work, but we haven't even started the process yet of filing the, you know, the CR 101, so. Or taking proposals, yeah. 
So just skip it, Dustin, and go on to the other ones. Then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All okay, right, Dustin. I'm going to leave. It, I'm going to give it back to you and and uh, let you move through this. This. Uh... Gotcha. So, uh, Todd, you did have a, a question as far as is everybody feel like going over this and stopping at the places where we're making changes uh, in this document where we're prescribing changes that where they're not being made yet, but we're prescribing that they be made. Um, that's where I plan to stop in this, unless we have spots where somebody wants to maybe change a little bit of content to the report. Um, if we want to change a little bit of content, uh, I can easily add a comment in here. I can change it. Um, if there, I'd, I'd like to avoid lengthy, lengthy discussion on any specific one topic, um, because like we've heard it from others in the meeting so far, this is not the venue to uh, rediscuss in depth these sections. Um, we addressed all these. We moved the preliminary work forward to these master reports. And these master reports are essentially the work we've already done, just reformatted. And I just want to touch on the places where there's potential changes coming down. And that seemed to be the most expeditious way to do it during the fire tag. Um, what we have set up with the fire tag at this point now is to come back in the coming couple weeks to review what these reports have in here and uh, and break out if we're going to need to do proposals as a tag. Um, we'll look at these reports to um, fuel which proposals we need to uh, get working on to draft. And so if, if there's a section that we need to make changes to or anything, um, just raise your hand, speak out. I don't mind being interrupted as I'm going through. Um, I'm happy to to talk about it, but I, we, we can't afford the amount of time we just dedicated to 107.2.9. And so um, with that, I'm gonna keep rolling through. I'm gonna scroll kind of slowly. And if there's anything but blue here on the um, uh, the lines of information, um, I'll I'll read the section and we can. Uh, and it's just really going to be a a uh, a quick telling of what we're recommending here and maybe why. So, for example, in uh, uh, fa child hope family home child care, we've got a uh, modify the existing amendment to update to 16 children as a result of some of the work that was done here earlier in the year. Um, to increase the amount allowed inside a residential structure uh, for that use. For custodial care, we have uh, repealed the existing state amendment because the model code language uh, is verbatim for what our state amendment is. And I do believe that the dwelling, the efficiency dwelling unit is the same. And in these particular instances, we have the model code language and our state amendment language side by side in there for uh, comparison for high-rise buildings, we're um, recommending repeal of the existing state amendment uh, and recommend a proposal for further review. Um, it looks like the uh, main change in these sections was the occupiable roof uh, terminology that came into the code this uh, uh, edition. Um, so if there's a proposal that wants to come in, uh, we can uh, uh, review that at that time. For a limited verbal or physical assistance, um, I missed the insertion of the code text here. Um, and the model language is identical. I'm going to highlight this cell. Um, as, uh, as we get this ready to submit to the committee, um, I want to make sure I get this in there. Um, and I'm going to try to save some time by not doing it while everybody's watching me do the work. Here, it'll take me probably about a minute to get that in there. So I'm going to mark it for um, future editing for me. Okay. Oh, I have it here. So there's the code language. It's identical. And I'm missing loft. Moving through the definitions, that brings us to the end of chapter two. Chapter three, occupancy classification. We have a uh, modify existing amendment for the family home child care. Um, it's updating 12 to 16 and coordinating with the IRC requirements um, for the modify modifications. 
in here. We don't have the uh, uh, modification suggested in here, so we'll need to uh, just, it's a correlation item on this one with the IRC. And on that I IRC, one, the one that you had above, what was the code section that you had that under? That is uh, 305.2.4. Okay. All right. So 305. Oh, we're looking at the 21, right? Not 24, right? This is the 2024 code, but the 2021 right. section and the 2024 section are the same. Right. So the thing is, 305.2.3 is Group E occupancies, daycare facilities. So as that's far fine. So if you go to 2.4, if you go to 2. Point, that's that's fine. I just want to be they have a two five five or fewer children. They have a facility having five or fewer children. I'm just wondering if you if your section that you have um you're going to under you're going to add that under a group B. E? So it's it's already there right now under the group B e occupancy in the in the 2021 code. Um, it's also under the R sections later as well. Do we want to talk about 305.2.4 further? Well, I'm confused then. Because um, it says five or fewer children in a dwelling unit, which is 305.2.3. Maybe I wasn't here on this time. A facility such as the above within a dwelling unit, we have five or few children receiving such daycare, so we classified as an R3 occupancy. That's in the model code. Correct. Okay. So then you go down to the next one and you say family home care. So you have one where it says, having five or few children receiving daycare. That's 305.2.3. You go to the I codes or the residential code. And then we have another one for family home child care that says the absolute opposite. You might want to open up the code or maybe you can split your screen and open it up. Tim? If, if the question is to the numbering, 305.2.4, the numbering appears correct. And that is what we No, have. it's not the numbering. It's not the numbering. It's not the numbering. But look at the um, model code for. So this is the 2021 in here. Right. So when, so I was part of the this whole code change that was done with family home child care in coordination with the Department of Children, Youth and Family. Um, in, right, so read. in the state amendments, yeah. they never amended 305.2.3. They just wanted to include the family home child care section in here where it, it talks about licensed by the state of Washington. So if you're not licensed by the state of Washington, you're stuck. To that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I wanted to be licensed by the state of Washington. You change. OK, that's okay. fine. That That's the difference right there. No longer needed to comment, but thanks, Dustin. Thank you. So again, here in uh, 308.5.5, as another family home child care, um, it's all about updating from the changes that were done in the IRC earlier in the year to update from 12 to 16. Um, there's some coordination that needs to happen with these sections um, in here. And it's all about the licensed family home child care facilities. And on our, the uh, section 310.3 for residential group R2, uh, the recommendation is to repeal the state amendment for this section. Um, if the model language has no regulatory difference when compared to the Washington amendment. Um, I don't have the Washington amendment uh, pasted in here. I do believe it's uh, got to do with the um, more than 16. I, I don't know. Hold on. Give me one second.
Written dot. Yeah, in uh, in is the in the 2021 code they're showing no state amendment here, although we have one in the WAC. Um, so this is a no longer needed because the model code covers it. All right, so that brings us to the end of chapter three. Uh, chapter four, special detailed requirements based on occupancy use. We have a modify existing amendment for the means of egress, uh, mainly to incorporate the metric measure that's in the uh, uh, model code that's not in the Washington Amendment language. Not a huge deal, but um, just for consistency across. Um, same thing for separation walls, 420.2. Uh, we have some new uh, model code language to incorporate into that one. Um, so keep the amendment, which adds the last sentence and incorporate the blue language seen there. And some of these um, have some comments for renumbering in here as well. Uh, that's one thing that the blue will also signify if it just needs to be relocated into a different uh, spot right in the same section um, due to new model code language. Is uh, Ken Brulette here by chance? He is not. He uh, did volunteer to do some of that correlation work that we weren't able to get quorum for um, last week. And uh, so I'm expecting some more feedback from him. When we did our um, IFC review earlier in the week, he provided comments. I believe he's communicated with some folks on this group um, on the correlation um, in the fire code. It's the end of chapter four, brings us to chapter five, general building heights and areas. For uh, 503.1.4.1, we have uh, repealed the existing state amendment. Uh, it looks like... It looks like most of this is the same. We have the new model code language for section uh, exception two. Uh, they could be uh, wrapped into this one. So we have repeal the existing state amendment on that one. For uh, 503.1.4.2, we have modify the existing amendment, uh, mainly changing it from occupied to occupiable roof. Uh, it's been changed throughout the code. See the new amendments for these tables. Um, so I have some uh, work to do to correlate some of these uh, um, things here. We want to check the NEC 2020 is the same as the 2023. Um, we haven't done that work, but it's something we can do um, after we generate these reports and get them down the road. Is the reference still valid? 420.14.1. Oh, I didn't back up to check that one. Let's see. Off limitations. I think the uh, reference is still valid. Based on that, I'm going to delete that. For mixed use and occupancy, 508.5.1, repeal the existing state amendment. Uh, the model code has identical language. Uh, special provisions for 510.2, uh, they have to repeal the amendment. To, uh, model code language is identical. And uh, we see the green next to the model code language up here, just showing what we got going on there. 
Uh, to chapter six, types of construction for protected area, 602.4.2.2.2, repeal. Um, the model code saves cost on this one and appears to be, I don't see that it's uh, um, the same as the model code, but I, as far as our uh, group decided is that the uh, model code worked and would reduce cost on construction. For 602.4.2.2.4, separation distance between unprotected mass timber elements, uh, we have the model code uh, to be adopted and close out the amendment. For uh, 602.4.2.3 for floors, uh, repeal the estate amendment. Uh, the um, model code saves costs and is substantially similar. Same thing for concealed spaces, 602.4.4.3. And that brings us to chapter seven of the existing amendments, uh, 704.6.1 a secondary um, non-structural attachments to structural members. Um, we have new model uh, code language is the same as the 2021 amendment. Um, remove the word non-structural on the amendment title. So here, not necessarily in this section uh, right there, but the title of the section, um, remove that in there as well as part of the process. Brings us to chapter eight with no existing amendments and then to chapter nine. We have to check up on fire review with this one so we can uh, check that out after the generation of this report. So for 907.9, .9, this is a uh, whack language that's just uh, floating in there. At some point, there was an amendment to this section that's no longer there, and it's just uh, labeled as reserved. It's not the most appropriate thing for when you're dealing with the WAC. If you have the, the WAC chapter, like uh, the whole thing, 0907, we can mark that as reserved. This is just uh, extra language that we don't need in here. Um, so uh, we can repeal this particular amendment section. For 909.21.12, hoistway venting, um, we're going to recommend repealing the amendment since the hoistway venting was already removed in the 2018 and 2021 amendments. It used to be in section 309 in the 2015, which is the 2015, in the 2015 code. Uh, for 913.2.1, protection of fire pump rooms, uh, keep the amendment as modified by adding new language for the exception to protected pathways from NFPA 20. And keep exceptions one and two from the model code, which were removed in the previous uh, amendments. And then 915.1.1, Modify the state amendment uh, for the previous exception one aligned with the 2024 IBC updated language and add the requirement for all group two occupancies with the exception of R2 college dormitories. The previous definition or previous exception number two language is addressed by the 2024 changes. Hey, um, Destin, um, we should add a note on that. Um check with the fire review as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, all of chapter nine should all be checked with the fire. So Okay. So let me
All right. Then that brings us to 915.2.1 uh, for carbon monoxide. I think we have this marked to uh, review for um, all the carbon monoxide in the fire code. Um, so they just want to look at this one a little bit further because there's been some uh, significant changes in the fire code. Um, so as they do their review, we'll coordinate with the fire tag on that one as well. And uh, as far as the rest of chapter nine, I'll come through and put the comment for all the sections to review with the fire tag, but I won't do it all right now while we're going through this. Uh, that brings us to the end of chapter nine into chapter 10 means of egress. For uh, 1006.3.4 single exits, we have repeal the, the existing state amendment uh, because the model language is the same. Uh, I would like to make the note that we have a legislative update on that. Or 1009.8, uh, two-way communication. We have to repeal the existing amendment. The model language is the same. Same for For 1014.2.2 lateral location, uh, we have repealed the existing state amendment because the model language is the same. For 1015.2, we have repealed the existing state amendment because the model language is the same. For chapter 11, we're in 1101.2.1 uh, .1 as a reserved. It's the same as uh, the last reserved section. It's not required in there to uh, reserve that section. This one should be as modified to renumber. For 1101.2.3, uh, it's another reserved section that we don't need to maintain. And we have some modifications. For 1107.2, uh, we have to repeal the existing state amendment. Um, R4 has been added by model code language, uh, new model language and incorporated into Washington Amendment C, significant changes tab, and exception number two. Additional exceptions are added in the tag needs to review the new language in there. So I'm going to highlight this one as a... Uh, spot for oops for uh work for us here in the future mm 
For 1110.2 toilet and bathing facilities, we have to repeal the existing amendment in the model code language is the same. Can you add a note for um, the one you said to remodel up or to, to relook at it? Where it was was for trucks. Because now we have electric trucks. When the when the amendment was done above, there were no electric trucks. You know the one you're talking about, the yeah. 1107. That yeah. was the issue. It should that that's that's all it is. It's, right. You know my uh, my screen got frozen when I tried to delete that line out of there. So 1107, which one was it? Wait, was it this one here? The 1107.2? Motor vehicles. Fuel. No, it wasn't that one. It's EV charging stations? Yeah, it's EV charging stations. Yeah, what was the note you'd like added in there? Oh, it's just they've added trucks in there. That's That was the thing. That was what our amendment was. Is they now have trucks in there. Um, it wasn't in there before, so because now they have all those new electrical charging vehicle stations. That's I just want to make sure we we deal with trucks. That was it. Just because questions have come up here at Tacoma, does that count for my electrical charging station? If it's a for a truck for not UX, it's trucks. T T R U C K. That's not how you spell that. <laughs> it's just one when someone else looks at it i mean i, I i'm aware of it but it's just it's just someone else seems to look at it gotcha thank you Hoyt. all right we covered 1110.2 already and then i split this here to try to we had some trouble uploading this whole document as one pdf to the website so that's why there's this weird gap here. And it was supposed to be um, split on a page. And I guess with our edits today, it's moved it around a little bit. Hey, Dustin, I'll, I'll be right back. I just have to go to the bathroom, so I'm just going to okay. jump off for a sec. 10 for For uh, Section 1208, Interior Spaces, uh, the model code is identical to the amendment. Um, uh, for Chapter 13, Energy Efficiency, we have no existing amendments. In Chapter 14, Performance Requirements, um oh this is one that we wanted to look at for um uh we wanted to look at the rationale statements on this one and so in between the last time we looked at chapter 14 um i dug into the creation of this one uh looking into the older code stuff so this came on the books in 2009 um I am struggling finding code proposals for that era and um, the uh, CR documents that are filed don't have a whole lot of uh, um, explanation as to why it was added. But in 2009, an amendment was added and it was in section 1403.2. Um, and it was to add an airspace is not required behind fiber cement siding. If we wanted to check that one out, it's in WSR 07-16-025. It was maintained uh, in the 2012, 2015, and 2018 codes. And in the 2021 code, it was moved from 1403.2 to 1402.2 with no change. Um, so there's, um, it needs additional review um, from us on this one if we want to maintain that one. Um, but um, I just leave it as is for now, unless uh, somebody wants to have some input on that at this point. All right, seeing no hands and nobody unmuting, I'm going to keep on going, and we'll just leave that as the content for this line in here. Yeah, I'm just I'm back, Dustin. Just letting you know, I'm I'm not on this. Just letting you know. Thank you.
Uh, that brings us to chapter 15 with no existing amendments. Chapter 16, uh, we, uh, I'm not going to talk, but we're just keeping the amendments here so far. So it looks like the big change is some renumbering needed in these sections here. That's the end of chapter 16. In chapter 17, special inspections and tests, uh, section 1705.13.6 for plumbing, mechanical, and electrical components. Uh, we have repealed the existing amendment, and the model code is the exact same, is the exact same language. And that's the end of chapter 17 or chapter 18, soils and foundations. Um, in 1807.2.2, .2, we have maintained the existing amendment. It's just not colored right. Uh, chapter 19, 20, we have no existing amendments. In chapter 21 for masonry, looks like we've recommended maintaining all those amendments. Chapter 22 for steel has no existing amendments. For chapter 23 of wood, um, point, uh, since we were talking at Wabo yesterday about the table that's missing in our work, do you know off the top of your head what section that is? Um, yeah, I could tell you that. Um, yeah, so yeah, so just so people know that's on this call, um, what happens when ICC printed the first printing of the Washington State Building Code? In the original IBC, they left the table, completely left the table out of the printing. So then when they did the Washington State building code, um, and when they did the second printing for ICC, they put the table back in, but they didn't do it for Washington. And um, I will get to it. Um, hopefully that made sense for everybody. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get to the table yeah, right. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I got I, I swear I put it in here. Um hang on, let me open up my 2018 because I think I stuck it into my own copy. Um or 2021. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to find it. I have a email on it yeah i sent you an email on it no um, i i apologize I, I i wasn't prepared for um it's all right yeah uh, it's uh 2308.7.1 yeah i think that's right so And we've already notified ICC, so the online one has been corrected. So, just FYI. Does everybody understand what, what we're talking about? Just in case anyone has oh. any questions. I'll just restate. Uh, ICC left out a table by mistake. They've re-included it as an errata, and um, I was under the impression that it's also missing from our Word document in this uh, 2024 first version. And so um, I just want to make sure that we have the complete table going forward for our first printing. Um, much like uh, the 2021 code, it's uh, they're they're not really planning on doing uh, second editions. 
of this code. So if it's not in our Word document, we need to make sure it's there. And I don't think it's something that we have an amendment on. Um, okay. Anyway, I've got a note in here. I'll, uh, I'm going to create a new line for that table um, just to verify that our document's good. Not necessarily an existing amendment report topic, but... Um, yeah, it it is no state amendment, it is anything like that. ICC left it out, but in the next printing, it's going to be in. So it's not, it's not a, I think everyone, will, I think I'll be corrected now. So. Awesome. All right, moving on to chapter 24, glass and glazing. For 2405.3, we have to repeal the existing amendment. Uh, it's got a rewritten format, but contains all the elements of the 2021 Washington Code. I believe the exceptions and stuff are just kind of dropped out into different code sections. For chapter 25 and 26, we have no existing amendments. Chapter 27, electrical, maintain that amendment. Chapter 28, no existing amendments. Chapter 29 for plumbing systems. Um, so we have uh, some stuff uh, to change it to Washington State Plumbing Code instead of the uh, Uniform Plumbing Code or the IPC. Excuse me. In Table 2902.1, minimum number of required plumbing fixtures, uh, we have a modification proposed. Um, and we have need to incorporate some model code language and merge our UPC and IPC tables. Um, this is the model code table. And I believe we have another table floating out there with already kind of merged, um, but it's not included in this report. Brings us to chapter 30, elevators and conveying systems. For section 3006.3, .3, we have to repeal the existing state amendment. Uh, we have a confirm with the fire tag. The uh, model code has a new uh, number five in here. Um, and the recommendation is to repeal the existing amendment and uh, adopt the new language there. Brings us to chapter 31 for special construction. In 3103.1, we have a modification recommended to incorporate model code changes um, and review for a conflict with new exception number one and in the existing state amendment. Um, so that's just some work. I'm gonna put some uh, highlight there. For 3115.1 uh, modification uh, to renumber and correlate with the IFC review of NFPA 130. Um, and um, there was talk yesterday at the Wabo business meeting. Uh, the, uh, who was this, uh, Puget, uh, the folks who were uh, proponents of these amendments in this section are looking to do some more work on that. So we're looking to um, potentially bring them in at the next council meeting to make a presentation to the council, just as a uh, FYI, as far as what they got going, they are um, encountering some uh, different regulation in different jurisdictions and they're hoping that that's the sound transit thing, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, okay. And so they're hoping to bring some more stuff to make it uh, statewide to make it a little easier to do the, uh, they're going to more than uh, double their amount of line in the system for the light rail system in the um, Seattle Tacoma area. And um, just trying to make it easier for the review staff if they can get some more stuff in the model code or not the model code, the uh, amendments or the model code. All right. Chapter 32, encroachments into the public right-of-way. We have no existing amendments. For chapter 33, safeguards during construction. Um, 
We have a note here, uh, review for current application and should it be included in the IBC? So um, it is a model code section that is amended. Um, so I guess the question I would be seeking an answer for is, do we think we should amend this section out of the IBC completely? Is uh, Looks like that's what the note is calling for. Does anybody have any comment on that one or should we just maintain the amendment? I think we should just maintain that amendment. Okay. What's the amendment? I just want to make sure um, the amendment. It's this box here at the bottom of the screen. The, the green, basically? Yeah, so the black text is what's in the model code and the green is what's the difference. So yeah. the language is model code language has been taken out. Yeah, what's good about this is we're we're required by the fire code official. That's that's the big issue. The other stuff is important, obviously, don't get me wrong. But um this is actually I, I believe we should keep exactly our state amendment in there because it is under the fire. If the because you see the parentheses F, if the yep. fire decides to change that, um then let them do it. Not um not us on our side. Then we will keep the existing amendment and I just remove the note there. You're going to confirm with the fire though, right? Just to make sure they're, you said they're, they said they want to keep it right. The Is fire I, tech? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Uh, chapter 34 is a reserved chapter in the model code. Uh, chapter 35, um, we have some changes recommended here um, to keep the existing amendment, but to update to the uh, 22 editions of these two standards. Um, we don't have an amendment in Appendix E specifically, but we have it mentioned in um, our uh, preface text that we um, adopt Appendix E. Um, and after a review of that against the uh, ICC 117, um, we decided to keep Appendix E as an adopted uh, appendix for our users. So the one thing, what you're saying in here, right, where it says, ASC 7-22, yes. right? That is in the code already. There, there is no, I'm trying to figure out where you say, where is the changes actually that you, that is the code that we're using. Um, which I, I, I want to make sure I get this right. This reference standard that you put in there, where, what is our state amendment on that one? Let me check. So, because I thought we adopt, well, I thought we got that in the in the structural codes. What we needed to do, uh, so I thought we uh. So it should, it should be modified to remove the ASCE seven amendments. Josh, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I was one who reviewed this, and just to kind of remind folks, it was the amendment included adoption of several sections and other references that are now adopted by the model code. I had originally said we should remove it, but we had noticed as a group that there were some aspects, I believe, of the NFPA 13 lines that weren't uh, consistent with the model code. So that's all this was, was just up, it, a portion of it got adopted into the model code and a portion of it did not get adopted into the model code. Right, so okay, so that's the NFPA, the NFPA one. This is what our amendment looks like. And so what we're looking to do is pull out the 716 modifications, I believe, pull out the NFPA 130 and uh, uh, make uh, the NFPA 13 a little bit updated. But it's, uh, and we had also talked about removing the reference to ASCE 722 because it adopts only a section, whereas yeah. we're adopting the whole code along with the model code for this change. Yes. All right. And those supplements one, two, and three, just uh, that 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 got up uh, that got put into 722. That was yep. the problem. Those so the so now now it's correct. It's, so I don't know people who are using that code on this call, but they finally got it right. <laughs> All right. Then appendix P um is the construction and demolition material management um and sleeping lofts. Um the appendix P uh, in the 2024 code is now sleeping lofts. And so our existing amendment would need to be renumbered as appendix Q. And so here is the existing amendment. Um, it would all just change to Q in the numbers inside there. 
And that brings us to the end of the IBC existing amendments review. Is there any specific section that anybody would like to go back and rehash? Yeah, I would like to ask one question on this. You know, appendix actually are individually adopted by you know jurisdiction unless the state specifically adopts it. Mm -hmm. If you go up the sleeping lofts, you know, we, we had two options here. One put it in the model code or, or one put it in the appendix. The model code did not, um, the, the model code at the hearings and stuff, people didn't really understand this type of what we're talking about um, that we're getting a lot here in Tacoma and some of the other large cities, these sleeping lofts that they're talking about. Bellevue's getting a lot of them. Um, my question is, will the state be adopting appendix P without us putting anything through or does something have to be put in there because the appendix, right, is unless it's specifically adopted by the state, it's jurisdiction by jurisdictions, right? And right. Appendix, appendix P is um, for our occupancies, um, just FYI. Um, so I'm curious, um, is that something, I mean, I thought we had sleeping lofts in our state building code. I thought that was something that we put along to a while ago. So yeah, we, we have it maintained in the body of the code in uh, the R sections. Um, this is a new appendix and it kind of contains the same stuff. And in our discussion of that section, uh, we right. just, instead of adopting appendix P that we'd leave it in the body of the code and, and hopefully that in the next like 2027 edition that maybe they'll pull that into the body of the code similar to what we have going on in Washington. Okay, so, so my question is going to be, does jurisdiction by jurisdiction um, have to adopt appendix P's outright or is the state going to adopt? So right now, there's no proposal to adopt Appendix P, um, but the information contained in Appendix P is in our our section of the of the of our code amendments. Okay, so it is basically it could be used. Basically, it doesn't have yeah. to go through a process. For, we, for, right. um, yeah, gotcha. the, that's my question. Yes, we don't need to adopt it, uh, adopt the appendix because we already have that in our our code text. Yeah, that was my that was basically my question. Is that it's basically already to use. We don't have to have individual people submit. It, it matters for our ordinance. The reason I ask that question is yeah. our ordinance, we have some of the stuff in there. And if, if it's already adopted, then we don't have to agree about it. So, yeah, by the city of Tacoma. Let's see if I can get to it real fast. No, no problem. I thought up in the, in chapter one or something like that, or it's whenever it goes. 5150, uh, 003, it's like a preface. Uh, it's not an amendment it. code. It's kind of our charging sections. Yeah. But it should okay. be in, in, in section 420, I do believe, in the end of that section. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I just couldn't remember. Maybe other people remember it. I just wanted to be sure that was um correct. Get up here. Is there any other sections we'd like to discuss while I slowly scroll back to 420? I think you're right, Dustin. Now that you said that in 420, I think I think it is correct. I just, um, I think you're right on that now. Okay. Um, I, well, did, I I apologize to take people's time on that. I just, I just don't want. I mean, we're getting these and we're doing them and we're doing them and we we want to make sure it's, um, you know, these sleeping lofts are addressed properly. Gotcha. Um, is there any other sections we'd like to jump to to talk about just a little bit more? And then I guess if there's no uh, uh, desire to do that, we're in a position to entertain motions to move this to the committee. I I'm, I make a motion to move it to the committee. Okay. Second. That was Michael. Right. Hey, Dustin, you want me to call the vote? Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Recommend recommendations approved. All right. Thank you guys. Let me save this bad boy. It worked well, Dustin. That method. Yeah. Is anyone uh, everyone okay with that method? Okay.
Yes, and I, I, I too commend <clears throat> you, Dustin, for putting it in such a nice, organized manner. It made makes that final review much easier. So thank you. You're very welcome. It, it was a big load, and I, I have to share some of that thanks with Rosanna. She did a lot of uh, lifting on these documents as well. Um, so uh, kudos to her as well. Um, let me get the next one open up. This is for the significant changes um, of the IBC. Oh, it says I already have it open. Let's find it here. Boom. And so for this one, we'll be looking at sections that are marked for amendment needed. They should have a yellow highlight in them. There's not a whole ton of them, um, but uh, we also have the uh, um, code sections put into here as well. So for chapter one, no significant changes were identified. Uh, chapter two, we have a significant change, no amendment. Chapter three, no changes identified. Chapter four. We have no amendments recommended. Chapter five. Uh, we have a uh, needs additional review. This is not a significant change. Incidental usage, usage, sorry. Language added to eye occupancies and ambul care, ambulatory care facilities uh, and automatic sprinkler system. So down here, uh, this and provide automatic sprinkler system was added to all these code lines. And I remember when we were talking about it, that it just needs uh, to make sure that it's not, I guess, overburdensome to our community because we did identify it as having some cost increase for these folks. So uh, we'll just leave this one highlighted yellow to go back and look at. And if a proposal is needed, we can uh, decide as a tag later to potentially generate one, or we can also leave it to industry to generate a proposal as well. Uh, types of construction, no significant changes identified. Uh, chapter seven, fire and smoke protection features. Uh, no amendments recommended. Chapter eight, interior finishes. No amendments recommended. For chapter nine, you coordinated with the fire guys on that lithium battery. I know there's a lot of fire stuff on that. That's the, the probably the one I get the big discussions on. I just want to be sure they're um, gonna. They're going to match. We we will be doing that work. So Ken Brulette's the big lithium uh, battery guy that I'm aware of, and I know he's uh he's he's got amendments proposed for this for these sections already. Uh, okay, that's what I that's what I remember that what I heard from other people that amendments are coming in for these lithium battery stuff. Yes. So for 915.1.1, uh, this is carbon monoxide, new language. Uh, we have it identified for needing some work um, for an amendment proposal. So uh, these ones that we do have the yes on here, I uh, envisioned uh, are this group here working together or breaking out um, some volunteers to write some proposals for these sections. So uh, carbon monoxide um, has had some changes in the fire code and the building code and um, some correlation and work is needed just to verify the changes aren't anything crazy. And I believe the intent of the uh, yes up here is for all of 915, since it's all new language. Hey, Dustin, a little thing, if you don't mind like in the in the footers down below, or maybe you have it on the top, just have the page numbers on there. Oh, I missed that on this particular document. Um, it's on the other ones and I, okay. I'll get that in there for the committee reports. Um, yeah, that, so. that was all it is just so, I mean, I print things out still. I'm an old school and make handwritten on, then go on to the screen. Younger, like my kids and all that stuff, they don't print out the same. So. And I, I, an idea I had after I printed all these out to PDF was to add a header that also st states which document you're looking at as well.
Okay. Uh, that's the end of chapter nine. In chapter 10, no significant uh, changes were identified. For chapter 11, um, section 1107.2, exception number one, uh, we have a yes amendments needed to modify the existing amendment. Um, I think that we have notes on this one in um, the existing amendments report as well. And there you go. Okay. Brings us to chapter 12 for interior environment. And then just so you guys know, this adopt change language wouldn't necessarily mean that we're making a proposal. Just when we adopt the code, we're going to adopt these sections as well on adulterated. Uh, so section 1202.4.3.2 condition spaces, an amendment is uh, uh, called out to change the reference to the international energy conservation, change the IECC reference to the WSEC instead. So not necessarily a significant change, but a good good uh, catch as far as changing that section. And then um, we have not any more on here. So I'm gonna change that to a no and remove the highlights. Brings us to chapter 13, 14, and 15 with no significant changes identified. Uh, chapter 16, structural design in uh, 1602.1 for notations. Uh, there's no Washington note um, in here and an amendment is needed to add one. So, um, Roger, are you still online with us on the phone? I thought that was for the tsunami stuff. Yes, I am on here. I just wanted to, I was a little bit confused and I want to make sure that uh, I have, it's not going to confuse anybody else. As far as a Washington note in here, are you, what? what is the nature of the note you're looking for? No, I think what, that was like the, the first section I reviewed and my comment was, is the, there is, there is a significant amount of information in the new code about, oh, is this tsunami or is this uh, uh, tornado? No, this is the structural design, just basic 1602, right in the beginning. Um, yeah, so it's its own section for notations. Um, and I, I guess notes I identify the components of the equations in here, correct? Um, I am not sure, Dustin. Okay. Um, I, I know that um, in one of our books, I, um, I, I was tossing out there early on, maybe having a bracketed WA to put in front of code sections that contain Washington amendments um, for this one. But uh, I don't. I don't think that this is what this one is about. Um, do we want to keep this line item in the uh, significant changes report? I don't think it's going to be an issue if we do. I just we might get some questions on it. I am not. I'm not remembering. Okay. What well, the I'll leave it in about? Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it in here and um, and if. You know, it, it's just a report. So if we um, don't need to do anything in this section, we can okay. uh, move on down the road later on. And and Roger, maybe I can get with you before the committee meeting and, and just update that one section. Yeah, and as we go on, I'll kind of dig back through that. Like I said, that was the first chapter I went through. So it was quite a while ago. Um, okay.
Um, here, instead of breaking these out into separate line items for this table, we just put them all in one big chunk and uh, have the table here below. Uh, 1608 as a section for snow loads. Um, we have a proposal needed for this one. And uh, the clear, it's a, there's new language in here that uh, clarifies that snow loads can be strength-based or allowable stress-based. Um, so just, I think it needs some uh, uh, looking at and a proposal maybe needed on that one. Yeah, the proposal needed is for to keep the uh, the new the code got rid of the snow load maps for Washington. Mm -hmm. And so there is a pretty big amendment needed to uh, make sure we keep those. or I guess we need to consider whether that's required, but I think that that's what the uh, consensus I, was for discussions. Yeah, I can add on that. If you go to ASE seven, and you start looking at the snow loads, there's yeah. some big changes on there. Yeah. So I guess the question it comes up, I've talked to some other people on that, and I don't really know the answer. Okay. I'm just saying those snow load tables were done a long time ago. I don't know which one's correct. You know what I'm saying? Do we want to use the ASC map? So or is the Washington one correct? That's that's one I'm not a, I believe our Washington was okay. Yeah. Because I, in me, climate change. The only thing would be is someone would go down, I would think, rather than go up. But I don't know. So, so wait, I, I think I neglected to send this to the group. I sent a little summary of it. I took a bunch of random points in Washington and compared it. And I found that the ASCE maps were not very sensitive to our elevation changes. So, for example, you could have a valley that's supposed to be, uh, you know, 70 PSF. And then you come up the hill of the mountain, you know, as the crow flies, a thousand, less than a thousand feet over. And it should be 150 PSF or 120 PSF, and they were still coming up with a 70 and vice versa in areas where the Washington map would be sensitive enough to show a significant drop in some of our steep slopes, the ASC map did not. So I can certainly send that to you if we want to kind of talk about that more, but um, it certainly seems clear to me that the Washington maps will be more appropriate because the ASC I, just doesn't match our terrain. Yeah, that, and, and I'm actually on the same boat as you. I'm still using the Washington map, and I think the Washington maps are correct too. I was just talking to some other people around that I I can't get from ASCE. I've been trying to ask them, how did you come up with these snow load maps? And I and I haven't been able to get a response back yet. I was here doing it through Tacoma, so I do agree we should keep our Washington map still, unless someone else knows something that that um well, like you said, I, I, I agree with you. I think and how about this too, boy? I'd be more than happy to work with you on a uh, amendment proposal, and we can kind of dive into this a little bit deeper as we um, get into that phase of it. But I, uh, I definitely think more information would be better. But currently, it certainly looks like the Washington maps would be most appropriate. But I'm happy to work with you um, to get a proposal together on that. Because uh, Roger, you as well, it seems like the three of us are pretty. Right. Yeah. And there also is somebody from SEAW on the state. Yes, they have a snow load committee that was kind of. Uh, it kind of didn't have a whole lot of work, but um, so we will we can get some help from SEAW as well. But the idea is, is we need to look at it. <laughs> I think definitely. The but I think we've got that flagged here, and I I'm committed to making sure that no one here forgets it because I'm obsessed with this issue. So you'll be hearing from me if anyone forgets. <laughs> Michael, yeah. yeah, my comment actually was going to be just the SEAW document. Of course, I still use that too. Has that been updated at all in the last 20 years or is no. I mean, it, we've been using it ever since, but yeah, no, it, it, it hasn't. It, it hasn't. It came from what 96 or something yeah. like that when we had the heavy snow and um, it hasn't been updated. And it, it, by the way, it is both an SEAW and WABO paper, uh, yeah. but it hasn't been updated but at the same time, all of this, it was in the old code. Um, 
when the new code came, the new IBC came out, they just dropped it uh, without really, I don't, I don't think much study or consideration. So um, there were several states that in the, uh, in the old code, the 21 code, they had special requirements. Um, the only one that made it through was the Alaska one is in the 2024 code. So we, as a state, we need to decide, do we, stick with the SEAW um, or do we go with the, the new code, which would, inc you know, like I, uh, Josh said, I'm not sure it's as, it's very accurate. So it seems to be, and I'll, I'll just say one last thing before we uh, move on here, uh, Michael, I was kind of of the same mind of you of why would we use maps from 1996 when we have this new, nice digital online closed form, everything's great, not from ASCE. And I was kind of banging the ASCE drum because I thought it'd make it so much easier for the industry to have a good, consistent digital resource. But um, it does seem that they just aren't sensitive enough to our terrain, both in the very conservative and very non-conservative directions. Yeah. And yeah. We, actually, we also I, found I, that. I, sorry. Oh. I prefer the, the Washington, uh, the, the SEAW one. It's, it's far more in depth. Uh, and and was a great study at, at the time. So, and it's not even just the elevation pop out. There's just it's such a wild divergence that until somebody can demonstrate that there's a good reason that all of the snow loads we've been using are wrong, I, I, it sounds like we're all on the same page. And I'll stop beating a dead horse. Yeah. yeah, and I just want to tell you, we we found the same thing with the tsunami stuff, just because I'm on the tsunami tag, and so that's why we put in the tsunami maps that we have that you have to go in. And not use ASCs um, seven. You actually use the state of Washington tsunami stuff. So. That's not supposed to be on that map. Yeah, there's all our tsunami stuff. So. All right, that's the end of chapter 16. Chapter um, 16. Dustin, I just wanted to go back. I've been looking here, and I think uh, what the 1602.1 notations comment was, mm -hmm. it, is, it was actually something that I had flagged um, about the snow load and the allowable stress versus strength design that just the notations and we needed to update it I, i'm not sure um you know i don't know that we need to flag it at that point um this is the significant changes i, I think there is a significant change in the the way that snow loads are calculated but i think that um wherever we have it down below we'll we'll flag that okay so it's okay to change that to a no. Yes, I think so. And then um, the whatever group gets together and tries to figure out how we adopt the state of Washington uh, snow loads, we do need to we do need to try to uh, incorporate the the strength design because all the snow loads that were previously were allowable stress. So there will be some updating that needs to happen on that. But um, again, I think Josh is on top of that. We'll figure that out as we go through that and get that amendment worked out. Yes, Roger, my understanding is that the, the ASD uh, design is incorporated into the IRC, but not into the IBC. Does that sound correct to you? Uh, well, in the, I, in the IRC, right, there's a table that goes in there. And I believe in the IRC, that was an ultimate. It was not. Um, no, it's not ultimate. for the it's... wood. For the wood, it was all. It was still allowable stress. It, it gets confusing for everything, people that aren't engineers. Everything snow load wise until this code change has been allowable stress. Yeah. We're now bringing in this language and and changing load combinations, doing all this stuff to be consistent with other loads. It doesn't effectively change anything except decimal points, but it confuses things significantly and any amendment we may propose should include some conversions from the Washington state maps 
to this new ultimate code just so we can go back through and reduce it right back down <laughs> in yeah. most cases. But I actually am not sure on the, on the, oh, I'm not sure on the residential code. I, I work in residential a lot. It certainly was not ultimate. Okay. Okay. But is the new one, Josh? The, oh, I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood the question. I will have to look. I don't know that I have looked at that. The last I recall is it still had the table that asked jurisdictions to fill out and it stays it doesn't necessarily kick us to ASCE. There's options for that, but they ask the individual jurisdictions to fill out that residential worksheet. Okay. Yeah, and it it is, I, I've been involved with that. It, they're still working. It's still working for us. So. Gentlemen, may I suggest in the interest of time, we kind of move yep. on from this and, and circle yep. back to some <laughs> offline conversations where we don't have a full forum. Yep. All righty, chapter 17, uh, no amendments identified as being needed. Chapter 18, Uh, we have uh, this one. I don't have a recommendation in here for uh, amendment being needed. Um, I don't recall a lot of conversation on this one. Um, here's the change here. Adds a sentence to the exception. Um, I'm inclined to mark it as amendment not needed. Maybe the industry can drive a proposal if we need one. I guess same for most of these, unless somebody thinks we need an amendment in these sections. Um, can you what? Okay. And that's the end of chapter 18, chapter 19, soils and foundations, no amendment identified. Uh, chapter 20, aluminum, chapter 21 for masonry, no significant changes. Chapter 22, steel. No amendments identified as being needed. Chapter 23 for wood, one change, no amendment uh, identified. 24, glass and glazing. No amendments identified. Chapter 25, gypsum panel products and plaster. Uh, no significant changes. Uh, 26, plastic, no changes. Chapter 27, electrical um, lighting protection system systems. Uh, we have some, some tiny words in here. So recommendation, possible significant change. Um, accepted, seems logical to limit where lighting protection systems can be installed and how to interconnect those systems. This may increase costs. However, that would be negligible and never requires the systems to be installed. It just outlines when you shouldn't, and if you choose to, what all should be connected to it. NFPA was the proponent and provided lots of justification. Note, original proposal was to require on all buildings. What was approved was when installed, quotations. So we have an amendment identified for here. Um, in lighting protection systems for a new section. Chapter 28, mechanical systems, no significant changes identified. Chapter 29, plumbing systems, uh, table 2902.1, minimum number of required plumbing fixtures has a uh, yes and amendments needed. Uh, there's been many revisions added to table 2902.1, providing numerous additional subdivisions of occupancy which require detailed review for cost implications. These additional categorizations seem to offer advantages and clarity at, a, at common mixed occupancy conditions. 
uh, merger with the Washington version of the table will, re will be required with Washington addition of the occupancy column. And I think we have that table prepped in some of our other documents. Chapter 30, elevators and conveying systems, no significant changes identified. Chapter 31, special construction. Some coordination with the fire tag identified. Dustin, I saw a snow load up there as you were paging through. Where does it reference? Oh. What's chapter 31 again? Special construction. Okay. And uh, I remember when I started seeing these sections, I was like, they don't, it didn't feel like they belonged there, but reading them, uh, I guess they do. They're all new sections in that chapter. Um, Let's see, no load. So we have uh, 3103.6 structural requirements and special construction. And then we have the snow loads um, in here. And we marked it as the industry may want to make a proposal on these sections in here. I don't know. I could tell you why that's in there is because um, we've had it here in Tacoma sometimes. They're saying, hey, we're just putting up this. And then I know in Redmond had the same thing, putting up these like Circus Soleil or something. They come up and they put these fabricated stuff in there. And they there are some places that are sometimes requiring them for certain design loads and those design loads i mean if you're doing it right in the middle of the summer there's no snow i mean yeah. and yeah. they're being taken down and and that, that that was what the the issue was is like it's just not clear in the code sometimes because it says structural requirements okay. and when it comes in the structural requirements that, that that was kind of the issue that i mean we we haven't had a problem with that when we've had our temporary structures go up i mean like for example in Tacoma, we have um, like an ice skating ring sometimes that has a tarp that comes down that people go skating on there during the winter time. But there's certain loads we require them to design there and it's, it's temporary and yeah. it's taken down. So that, that that's what it was. So. Okay. Yeah, I remember that discussion when we went through that. Okay. So no uh, amendments called out for those sections. Uh, chapter 32, encroachments into the public right-of-way, and 33, safeguards during construction, no significant changes. Chapter 34 is reserved. And then we have some changes throughout the reference standards. I don't believe any amendments were called out for this. Uh, there's a lot of lines in here for um, the different sections in here. You know, the only thing that I always thought would have not been a bad thing to put in there, we model through the code. Um, but one of the one of the reference standards, we have kind of our own Washington State Energy Code. It's 100% mm -hmm. our own energy code. And I got a question from someone that was, because um, I told them, you know, you got to meet our Washington State Energy Code. But a lot of the stuff is in the reference standards. And I always thought in my thing it seemed like it would be a good thing to put in the reference annual standards for the energy part that you have to use the washington state energy code um, method but it's it's not really a standard we publish but we go online and do it and i'm not really i haven't gotten my head wrapped around how i would do that but that's that's one of the issues we've had for people that design out of state so okay that's the end of the reference standards um, appendix E, we didn't identify any significant changes within that appendix. Um, appendix P, the main thing is there's a new appendix for placing it, and it needs to be renumbered as Appendix Q. Um, and then I have a new line in here for Appendix Q, um, just renumbered from a P to Q. And that is the end of our significant changes report. Um, is there anything we'd like to go back and uh, review further? Uh, I do. Uh, b before I go there, though, to, to White's comment, we do reference that on in our IBC Chapter 13. 
I think is is where we you know because we make that reference at least to the energy code. Um, back to the the only thing I'd like to just go back to is the twenty seven chapter twenty seven. We years ago we had a L and I electrical representative on the state building code council, and they were very valuable in in things like this. Do we have? Anybody from the LNI's electrical division? Because you know, when we, it comes to lightning protection, I mean, it's you know, I see it a lot because I, I deal with a lot of data centers. Um, but you know, as for requiring it elsewhere or, or any of that, you know, really that that that's in the hands of the electrical engineers. And and you know, my question is, does LNI have an opinion on this? And if so, then then we should probably be looking, you know, to their guidance um, for this section. I think simply because you know, you know, we're we're not the electrical side, and we don't really have the that science <laughs> uh, group with us right now. So we do have a council member, an ex officio member from LNI, um, but as far as other folks from LNI, we don't have any folks like within the tag or committees. Um, from LNI, so um, I guess we would need to reach out to their to their electrical division to ask if they had an opinion on these sections. And yeah, so one of the good things Mike brings up a really good point. I mean, like some of the stuff that's in it that I've had to talk about is they talk about how long the lighting has to last, and I'm not an NEC expert um, for the National Electrical Code. But it says a lot of places in there, not for 90 minutes, you know, at least for last has to last for 90 minutes and stuff. Um, we're fortunate enough here in Tacoma, Tacoma Power takes care of all that stuff. But it's one of those things that would be nice for everyone around the state that if LNI is actually taking care of those sections like Mike talked about, um, then, you know, maybe it isn't it's something. But th there are lots of stuff in 27 um you know, emergency stand, all that kind of stuff for the different occupancies. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. So that's because that we do leave it for our, our electrical part. So. And typically when I see the lightning protection systems, they're not tied with the building's electrical systems because they're trying to channel that lightning to ground and not have it surge or affect the the equipment grounding system of the building so again yeah you know, that's a little outside of my expertise also so i'm you know i i just you know i would like to get l and i's opinion on that section i, I did a quick google ideal. search and it appears that uh the nec doesn't have any provisions for lightning protection there's a different nfpa document that does though um, but we can we can always reach out to LNI to uh, just to see if they have an opinion. Yep, great. Um, so I'll leave that coordinate with LNI Electrical Division. I'll give it a little highlight as well. Um, any other sections we should go revisit? All right. Just want to be sure. Twenty nine, chapter twenty nine. Um, just like to look at it one. I mean, because remember we have we're in the Uniform Plumbing Code. Um, I have not, maybe someone else, did someone else go through and look at the, you know, in the, the UPC 29 table is actually we use, but I, I just didn't have time to go through the UB, U, uniform plumbing code to make sure. I'm assuming you have a tag for the uniform plumbing code. Is that correct, Dustin? Yes, it'll be in the yeah. group and stuff. So a little yes. bit of a disconnect there. Um, but let's say we did the work here today and in group two, we identified something in the UPC that we wanted to correlate here. It wouldn't be too late to incorporate something like that in, while we're working group two stuff as well. Okay. That's all I would like Just if you just want to make, uh, I have a pet peeve when things are different in different codes. It's just, it's been my, that's one reason why I'm on the ICC code, code, code of correlation committee is uh, I think that gets, not done all the time. So that's one of the gotcha. things. So. so is there any other sections we should go revisit? All right. The only the only thing I would like that we haven't talked about, right? I know we have all these appendix 
that are all in the code and they've added some more appendix and things like that. Um, is there anything on the state building code tag on any of these appendix that we think we should take and try to get the appendix adopted by the state or not? I don't, I don't know if you want to pull up the code and just say, is this something we want to do? I mean, I know we kind of leave the appendix out. Um, so as far as the appendices, we've got E and P soon to be um, Q. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, it's farther down. You got it. You had it right. You just got to go. You know, there, for some reason, it wasn't showing up on the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah so so these are the things. These are, I don't know, to be honest, on some of these things. If if this is something that the state, now you can let us, let us know. If you think there's something like this that we should um, get into, you can always do a performance-based application. I know that city, the East jurisdiction, could, that's an administration section that looks at that, but that's something else. But I, I'm curious if there's anything in these appendix that the state's interested in um, dealing with or not. So, so there hasn't been any uh, thing brought up on the radar for me. Um, and if it was in the interest of the state, I would hope that the uh, citizens or local jurisdictions might make a proposal to adopt statewide any appendixes that they wanted uh, uh, for statewide use. Um, so I, they haven't been included in, in the review of the tag previously, other than the ones that are adopted by the state. And we did the one review of uh, Appendix E just as a um, kind of a touch base with it because it... Uh, um, interfaces with some other sections of stuff we do have adopted there. So um, I, I think that going over the appendixes to to see if we want, want to adopt them is not in the uh, scope of work for today. Okay. Now, the one I, thing I would be, it would be nice to do, you know how we got the sleeping lofts that you're going to put in there in the code? It's in, you see, that's how the appendix P, the sleeping yeah. lofts down there. I could tell you why I got into the appendix because people in the national, there's all confused about these sleeping lofts. Not you know because they're they're not mezzanines they're it's actual sleeping loft. Um, you might want to just compare that stuff because some stuff was talked about that just to make sure it's correct. I I didn't do that. I apologize. I I'm familiar with the sleeping loft. I know it's required. What we have to do in Tacoma, um, but um, I wasn't. We, I, we I believe a, we got we, it right. We did a deep dive and Dustin did a full comparison for us, so I think we're good on that. Okay, that's great. That's what I thought too. That's what I kind of remember. So I just wanted to be a hundred percent. You know, I didn't. Right. You know, Michael? and then the one thing people on this call, if they find that they have issues with these sleeping lofts as they're going through some of the other tag members that aren't building officials, it'd be great if you reach out to some of us to see what your issues are that we could fix this in the later cycles. So, Michael, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I was just going to concur with you that uh, essentially with the appendix chapters. Uh, if anybody wants to make a, a statewide code change proposal, that would be the the time to look at all of that. Because I know, you know, locally we adopt a lot of these, or, you know, like grading, for example, is, is a big one that, you know, a lot of jurisdictions I work with, we we adopt that. But essentially the, you know, it would need to be a, a statewide code proposal to be, a, you know, for us to really start digging into any of those as a, from a statewide standpoint. Gotcha. All right. If there's nothing further on the significant changes report, we're in a position to entertain motions to move it to the committee. I make a motion to move this to the full committee. Second. This is Josh. Thank you. Second that. Okay, I think we had Hoyt and Josh, Josh. first, but thank you, Michael. Oh, okay. Um, okay, any any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed nay? The recommendation is approved. Yeah, and then one thing, Dustin, you know, a couple of the areas you want to fix and get kind of clean up, whatever you want to do, um, you'll you'll send this all out to us. So I could just, re if you don't mind, I'd like to just read through it one more time. Just Yeah, I don't have a problem. Sure. I'll, I'll make okay. the adjustments. I'll send out the Excel sheets so that you can edit them if you need to. And then, uh, um, but the, the, we'll, we'll get the PDFs out for the committee's um, ASAP because we need to have them out there for the committees to be able to review. Uh, Josh, you have your hand up. 
Yes, I was just letting you know I unfortunately have to take off here at three and wanted to make sure you knew for quorum. I think we're still good on quorum. Uh, where did I? I closed out that sheet. I, we had one extra, and then we had a um, another latecomer show up. So we had two over a quorum. Um, so we're good with your exit, Josh. I appreciate your time today. Yep. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Dustin, um, was I the latecomer? This is Tim. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that's uh, it for the IBC. Uh, is this group need any bio breaks or do we want to power through the um, IEBC? Let's power through. All right. I'm game. So am I still sharing screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, before you, we have the IEBC existing amendments report. Let me get to the top of it. There we go. Um, it was my bad. Uh, sent, I had sent a, a document to Rosanna to distribute to everybody yesterday, and uh, I noticed it was not the right one. So I sent out one early this morning uh, that is the correct one. Um, so I'll run through this one just like we did the uh, IBC existing amendments report. I'll stop at places where we're identifying some potential changes. And uh, if anybody has anything they'd like to say about stuff, we can uh, uh, entertain the conversation as we go through it and uh, just raise your hand or speak up. I'm, I'm friendly to that um, mode. So for chapter one, um, keeping those amendments. Chapter two, keeping those amendments. Chapter three, Uh, in 306.6, we're looking to repeal the existing state amendment. It's uh, taken care of by the 2024 model code language in 306.6.1 and 6.1.1. Um, and so the contents there are just not necessarily in the same format as our amendment. In section 306.7.1, uh, we're looking to repeal that amendment. The the WAC amendment is uh, alterations affecting an area containing a primary function. Amendment language is included in the new 2024 model code language. Recommend repealing the amendment. That's it for chapter three. Chapter four in section 401.2, the model code language is the same as the amendment language. In 401.4, Got a long uh, commentary on this one. So the, this WAC amendment requires compliance with building code provisions for new construction for buildings that are effectively demolished. We had a conversation on what effectively demolished um, actually means um, and repaired even with building substantial, sub, uh, even buildings with substantial structural damage as defined in chapter two are allowed to be repaired per section 405 structural. Therefore, this change would have increased cost for construction. Note that effectively demolished is not defined in the IABC. So how does one determine if the building was effectively demolished or not? Also, where the intended method of repair is demolition and replacement is also unclear. Many repair, repairs include demolition and replacement. So does any repair where an element is demolished and replaced in replacement needed to comply with provisions for new construction. This would, and I'll have to adjust this a little bit. Uh, this would negate much of the IEBC section 405 structural, recommend modifying the amendment to be more clear, but we have it as a repeal. So- Justin, Steve here, I'm sorry. I remember discussing this a bit and you mentioned that you were gonna go back and try to find out where this came from did you ever get a chance to do that i did not get a chance on that one i can definitely uh get some more history on this one um, yeah it's, it seemed like it was put in kind of by somebody or some group for some reason but we were unclear on it so that would be great yeah i recall that same conversation <laughs> yeah i'm gonna same here dustin this is Hoyt. i i it, it seemed weird i mean i think the code's pretty clear in the iebc what you need to do so gotcha 
So I'll uh, I'll dig into the history of the amendment here and um, I'll come prepared for the committee meeting. And there's always an opportunity for some of this stuff to change in the committee meeting as well. Um, although I expect less changes than um, what we've got going on today. Great, thanks. Um, section 405.1, the model code language is the same as our amendment. Uh, same thing for 405.1.1. And that's the end of chapter four. Chapter five. Yeah, we, just to Sorry. keep you so you know, Dustin, those, we took that to the national level. That's why the, a lot of those are just letting you know. So we yeah. got them approved. Awesome. Uh, for section 503.13, we have a modification. Um, the WAC amendment exempts voluntary lateral force resisting system alterations from complying with IVC section 1609, which is wind, and section 1613, which is seismic. Instead of the model code language, which exempts compliant from section compliance from section 503. The listed requirements uh one through four are the are generally the same for both. It appears that the model code allows a voluntary alteration to enjoy more exemptions from requirements than does the WAC amendment. In other words, a voluntary lateral force resisting system alteration must meet a greater number of requirements under the WAC amendment compared to the model code language. And it says fine to keep the existing amendment, incorporate the model language changes is the recommendation on that one. which we show here. 503.19, modify. Um, the amendment introduces new language that may have a construction cost increase. Some model code sections must be renumbered to keep the WAC amendment numbering the same. So we just need to um, make sure it's placed appropriately in the code. In chapter six, the classification of work, uh, keeping the amendments in that section. Chapter seven, alterations level one, keeping those amendments. Chapter eight, alterations level two. Uh, sorry, guys. Trying to do keyboard shortcuts and I've got fat fingers. There you go. All right. Chapter eight, alterations level two. Recommendations to keep the existing amendment. We have a note here in 809.1 that it only references the commercial energy code and um, should be uh, both energy codes. So potentially uh, just do 5111C and 5111R. Yeah, that was the, the, that's what I remember too. If you could throw in 51, does that have to come with a state amendment too? Uh, we would, I think that that's something that is more of a, um, editorial change. Cause that's the intent, uh, that is we discussed on this one. Uh, yeah, that's what I, th cause we've actually been, that's how we've been following it in Tacoma. We weren't making them do commercial for residential. So. Um, chapter nine alterations, level three. Um, same thing, um, should reference both the commercial and residential. Oops. And then we have chapter 10, change of occupancy. Uh, we have, I got two conflicting things here, Com the keep the amendment and keep the existing amendment, but uh, include the new model code language which uh, adds some stuff here at the bottom. So I think that I should pop. Oops.
Chapter 11, keep the amendment. Chapter 12, historic buildings, keep both of those amendments. Chapter 13, has no existing amendments. Chapter 14, relocated or moved buildings. Keep those amendments. Chapter 15, construction safeguards. Keep the amendment. Chapter 16, reference standards. Uh, repeal the amendment because the model code language is the same. And that is the end of that book. Um, do we want to go back and revisit any um, existing amendment sections? Seeing nobody unmuting our hands, we're in a position to entertain a motion to move the IEBC existing amendments uh, report to the committees. So moved, Lance Dahl. Yes. Second. Second, this is Bill. Okay, thank you, Dustin. Um, okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I oh, I was I I'm sorry I had done. Yeah, got it right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Think. Okay. All right. That that recommendation is approved. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to get to the significant changes. Uh, let me save this. That's you know, not... Dustin. Just one thing: when you put in the standard for the Uniform Building Code, just make sure you get the year in there too. One time, I remember one time they left that out. So the adoption of the uniform plumbing code okay. for all our plumbing okay. stuff. So just, just an FYI. Okay, just have a note on that one. And there we go. All right, for the significant changes report for the 2024 International Existing Building Code. Uh, chapter one, no significant changes identified. Same for chapter two. In chapter three, we have some changes, but no um, amendments um, identified as being needed. For chapter four, repairs, we have no amendments identified as being needed. Chapter five, uh, prescriptive compliance method. We have no amendments uh, being re identified. Uh, classification of work, we have no significant changes identified. There we go. Chapter seven, alterations level one. No amendments needed. Chapter eight, level two alterations. There's probably some cost associated with this one. We didn't identify it as amendment needed in the initial review. Remember that with the fire alarm and stuff like that? You know, just make sure you run a lot of that fire stuff by the, the fire tag too, just yeah. to see where they said so. In chapter nine, alterations level three, we have an amendment uh, needed for 904.1.3, upholstered furniture or mattresses. Um, we have a correlation between IFC needed um, and the comment says the IBC and IFC contain identical language. IEBC needs to be updated to avoid conflict. So I don't have examples of the IBC and IFC uh, language to compare, but um, it's just be something we can do as part of the work after this. Chapter 10, change of occupancy. No. no amendments identified. 
chapter 11, additions. No amendments identified. Chapter 12, historic buildings. Chapter 13, performance compliance methods. No significant. I thought, I thought in chapter 12, historical buildings. Um, I know we have that. I thought we had a state amendment on that, that it has to be registered by, uh, um, by the state of Washington. Let me... You know, it has to be registered as a historical building because a lot of times people claim it's an historical building, but it's not a historical building. I know we do that here in Tacoma. We've, we've actually listed historical buildings that have certain requirements. You can't change the outside and stuff. I, I'm curious on that, why there was no changes we're, on that. We're, we're in significant changes. That would be in the amendments section. Yeah, exactly. It would be in the amendments by the state of Washington. Oh, I see. So we do have that in, in, in our... Yes, it, 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 we do have. We, there's no significant changes in the I codes, but we do have state yeah. changes to that. Okay, all right. right. Thanks, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, chapter thirteen: Performance Compliance Methods. No significant changes. Fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. No significant changes. Um, any sections we want to go back and relook at? Then we're in the position to move this report to the committee. There is there there is something just to be sure, just to be on the reference standards. And I apologize for bringing this up again. Um, you know, they they still have all the plumbing codes all referenced throughout there. So it, we've never adopted the international plumbing code um, here at the state. So there is a significant there is state amendments for us. I don't know why we don't have already a state amendment in the reference standards to reference the uniform plumbing codes. I thought we did. I apologize. I don't look at these reference standards. I at the top of my head that it's all uniform plumbing codes standards because we've never adopted the IPC. So I would say, uh, are you saying to bring in the reference standard sections of the UPC into this chapter? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We should, it should be because when you're in the IEBC, right? Um, if you go in the IEBC, they have chapter 16, right? Anywhere we change um, our reference standards in the IBC, that has to be in the IEBC, um, especially when it's a code that we don't even adopt. And that is the Uniform Plumbing Code. So if you look at this, if you're in the IEBC in the 2024, the two, I, I could have swore I thought they did that. Uh, I've been going off that for I don't know how long. I just don't open up the reference standards. I thought there is no significant changes to the reference standards by ICC. But for us, for the state, I thought we had the Uniform Plumbing Code for that. Uh, well, I'm looking through it now. We don't have an existing amendment in there. Um, so if it's something that's, uh, needed, but if you, but if you look at chapter 16, like if you open up the IEBC, I, um, I have, I have a noted in my own, um, I, I cross that out and says, you know, you go to the uniform plumbing code for that. So the only amendment we have to this chapter is, uh, ACI 562-21. Yep. I, I know I'm familiar with that one. So okay. what do, what do other people do? Um, just curious, um. I mean, that's the way I have always done it. Well, if we need to include it in there, it'd be a uh, uh, now's the time to start uh, prepping a proposal for it. Right. I mean, Mike and some of the other building officials on there. I mean, don't you guys do the same thing? Don't you go to the Uniform Plumbing Code when they're doing something with the existing building? I do or did. So so I'll, I'll speak for myself. Um Traditionally, all we're looking at is plumbing fixture counts, even when we're doing change of occupancies out of the IEBC. And 29 is already addressed, and we do adopt, you know, Chapter 29 of the IBC for all of our plumbing fixture counts. So I don't use the IEBC to get to the UPC for anything that I can think of. But I, your, your point's valid. I think we should put a, you know, a comment in here, too to coordinate reference standards with the IEBC so that so that they're consistent. Okay, so here's the thing that Tim that's happened to me. Let's say they're not changing plumbing fixtures, right? But they're in the international existing building code for XYZ reasons because the plumbing's been damaged, right? 
the existing plumbing or something happened because of whatever. Um, I, I have made them in the ones that I have reviewed and approved. I just thought that's what it was in the reference standard. I didn't open it up. I went in and made sure they met the uniform plumbing code for the changes they had to do. And I just thought that was how it was. This threw me for a loop when I just said there's no changes in there. I thought I just assumed, and I'm apologize. I guess I probably should have looked it up. But for years, I just assumed anytime they do anything for plumbing um, in an existing building, they're in the uniform plumbing code. They're not in the international plumbing code. Now, maybe I'm the only one no, doing that. That's, that's right. A, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. You just got to remember all new construction complies with new code. So if they have to repair and replace something, it's UPC. There, there's, again, there's no link from the IEBC to the UPC that that I have ever used. And then, so what I was thinking is because I make people, I get a lot of stuff from out of state in the plumbing stuff. And I've, I've had to kind of educate Oh, I guess I wouldn't, I don't want to sound like a negative side, but educate our state requirements. It says, no, you have to do it through the uniform plumbing code. Um, and I've had that. And I just assume it was in the reference standard in our state. I've, I've actually never looked it up to be honest. So, so I, I think, I, I think that's just an oversight, Dustin. I, I don't know if we need a code change, but um, maybe just everybody just knows it and it's not a big deal. I, I, I don't know. So. Well, I think, you know, my personal opinion is that while everybody may know it, we get other folks who come in to do the work within our state, either they're doing the design work or they're doing the enforcement work. So like when I moved from Texas to Washington, you know, I I didn't know what to expect as far as all the different codes up here and notes like these in the places that folks who are savvy with the codes know to go look at. Um, are helpful. So if you, if you don't know what you don't know, having the note in there um, helps you understand more what's going on. So I think that, you know, the addition of the reference to the UPC standards would be a good thing um, for the so, ICO. Right. So I think that's an editorial change, not a code change. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you, when you say put a code change proposal in there, to me, that's an editorial change. Um, but I could be totally... I mean, Tim and Mike and all the other building officials. I mean, have have you guys ever had someone try I, to use the that? I think I think it's it is a editorial because we do adopt the UPC. Uh, there's no no conversation. There's no debate that's decided. You know, so but for process procedures, Dustin's the expert, and I would lean on him if we need to make a code change to get this in there. Then I think that's the way we go. I was going to say, I think adding it as a code change just because it's going to get out there and the public will have the opportunity to comment on it. I don't think that it's any, you know, no, I can't imagine that there would be disagreement that if you're in the IEBC, you should use the international plumbing code, but at least it gets out there and it gets flagged. So, yep. Man, somewhere, we, somewhere we have kind of that overarching kind of everything plumbing goes to uniform plumbing code. I'm not seeing that in the early chapters of 5150. I thought it was there. And, you know, and that would have, I mean, that, that would solve the issue. I think it's there in the residential code where it just kind of overarchingly says essentially anything referenced by plumbing goes to the uniform. So, you know, it's one of those that, yeah, code change or something that would, that would provide those pointers. I don't think it would, you know, be a substantive change, but uh, having pointers in different places is is always helpful for folks. Yeah, and there's one other thing I look at this, Dustin, too. Like we get buildings that they said, "Hey, I did the, I use the IEBC." I'm just saying, people future probably when I'm in my grave and dead and all that stuff, people will go back there and look at this code, and they said, oh, for this, they must have used the IPC for this. And then they start making assumptions off the IPC um, for XYZ. Because let's say someday, maybe, who knows, we may adopt the IPC in the future. And it would be nice to have, at least when you go back and look at the old codes. I mean, I got to be honest, I've gone, I have the codes all the way, all the codes all the way back to when we first adopted the UBC, U, um, U, 
species. So sometimes I have old buildings that were built under very, very old codes, and I have to look those up. What were their assumptions there to see how it gets worked? And so I'm hoping we don't have to do a code change with that. I hope it's just editorial. So I think that, like Roger said, uh, getting it out there for the public, there might be some misconception somewhere that the IBC doesn't require compliance with UPC. And um, I think just to cover the basis that we're not uh, just doing things at the, you know, shooting from the hip on them, that the, okay. the, the would be the most appropriate thing. And even if it's not, 100% necessary, it'll it'll uh, CYA on that. So then we have to draw something up for that, right? We got to submit something in. Yes. For okay. Any other sections we want to go back to? Are you going to make a note of that stuff? So when the report comes out, we kind of, uh, is someone in our tag going to be doing these, some of these things? Are you going to, are you going to assign some of us to us or is it just... Well, I would hope that you guys would volunteer for the sections. You <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Get get it so we don't all do the same thing. I mean, that that's fine. When you come back and say we have to do a state amendment, you could ask who wants to do this, who wants to do that. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not saying a sign, but someone in this group doesn't – we don't let it fall through the the cracks is what I'm, what I'm saying. So, Correct. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, if there's no further discussion on the uh, IEBC as a whole, we're in a position to entertain the motion for the significant changes report. I'll make a motion to move the significant changes report forward. Second. All righty. Okay, that was Tim and Hoyd. Uh, any discussion on this one? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Our recommendation is approved. Awesome. That uh, concludes agenda topic number five. And uh, if we are cruising into the other business portion, um, I would like to just discuss with the group of what the next steps look like for us. And uh, we've kind of touched on them a little bit throughout the day. Um, but the next steps would be uh, working as a group to develop um, tag proposals for code changes. And in order to do that, um, I would like to um, schedule some tag meetings here into the future, uh, not here in July. Next week's going to be busy with committee meetings and then the week after with another council meeting. So I would propose the second week of August um, for us to begin another meeting to start correlation, not correlation, uh, tag uh, proposal work. And, uh, and that way we can, uh, we would have a, a little over a month to uh, get those proposals drafted and ready to submit um, for our work uh, after the submittal period. Hey, Dustin, can you remind everyone what the proposal window is and, and if there's any action the council is anticipated to take in two weeks or a week? So for in two weeks, no. Yes. But on September uh, 20th, the council's anticipated to refer the proposals back down to the tag to begin the work on uh, on the proposals coming in. So uh, as of this moment, we have only, I think, three proposals total, um, and none of them, I think, for these codes we talked about today. And... Um, so as as we go through the the committees, I don't anticipate too much change in our reports from today at the committee meetings. Those will get forwarded up to the council. I also have some opinions for the committee meetings next week uh, that I'm working on. And then at the council meeting, there's not a whole lot for the agenda except for approving of these reports. The proposal period will close on the 19th. Um, and at that point, the council will refer those back down to the tags, at least that's the anticipated action. And um, and then we can begin the work on that. And so as far as uh, schedule changes that have occurred, you know, uh, as we uh, took a little bit longer than anticipated on these reports, uh, the review of proposals and getting that ready for our CR 102, that's kind of where our, um, where we've absorbed that, the extra time. So we've got a little bit less time to do the work on the proposals. And it's my hope that it doesn't uh, uh, mess us up to complete and, and catch back up with our timeline. But um, we'll we'll have to kind of see how that uh, 
goes as we complete the work. You can't go out on the floor. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Welcome. That was helpful. Any questions for um, Dustin on that topic? No, thank you very much, Dustin. You're welcome. And so I'd say I expect a poll to come out here in the next week or so about uh, future tag meetings for this group. And uh, I, I'd probably suggest that we just keep on holding them on Thursdays at the, the regular time and um, and we'll move on. Michael. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, I was just, if anyone's interested, I found that the uh, that gray area of, of essentially to answer the legal aspect on that plumbing code issue. It's WAC 5150-007 in the exceptions. The last paragraph of that essentially says, codes referenced which are not adopted through RCW 1927-31 or chapter 19.27a RCW shall not apply unless specifically adopted by the authority having jurisdiction. That's kind of that code piece that leads us to the uniform plumbing code and the international plumbing code, for example, is not within those RCW sections. And so even anytime there's an area of gray, like in the, you know, IEBC, where, you know, it does kind of seem gray because we don't have those pointers, that section is what officially pushes everything back to the uniform plumbing code. So. Yeah, I'm Thank familiar you. with that one, Mike, too, because I've had to pull something up like that. And the other thing is interpretations. I was just thinking just more. I think all of us on this line knows that for sure. Um, but the problem is people now more and more, I'm, I'm getting a lot, I don't know about other people's designs out of state for especially existing building codes, things like that, because everything can be done electronically. We're not used to doing, and I, I've had a bunch of discussions on this and sometimes you don't have a pre pre design meeting that they do at the building department. And I had a couple projects where they used the wrong code and I, granted it was their mistake. I mean, don't. I mean, they had, to, but they were all, you know, the first thing they say is, where does it point me that? And I, go, well, I feel like saying, where does it point you to do it that way? But, you know, that's, that's here or there, but, you know, that's all I'm saying. I mean, if you don't change it, like we said on that, um, so, I mean, I'm like, I'm still going to make them use the uniform plumbing code. It's just, I was thinking more for, not for us, but for people that aren't, aren't as experienced, especially people that are coming up that are eventually going to replace me as people start retiring. So that was it. Awesome. Yeah, the residential codes got a lot clearer kind of preface to that than the uh, building code or IEBC. So pointers are always nice, but but uh, from a legal standpoint, it is there. And uh, so. Yeah, and the other thing, Mike, that happens, and I don't know if any of you guys have been involved, it's, it's, I look at more of it when it's missed, okay? So what happens when it's missed and it's gone through a long process of design and then it goes into legal stuff, all right? When you have ambiguity in, in something written, um, it then comes down to a court decision and no matter what, if you ever get to that situation, you're losing money no matter what, even if you're right. And, and that's kind of the my my point. I I, th I just want to be clear. That's all I'm, I'm saying. It's not that I think it has to be done. I'm We're pretty good at it, but I'm just worried about smaller jurisdictions maybe or someone from out of state. That's all. Brett, you have your hand up. Yeah, I got a quick one. Um, it's my understanding that the proposal period is now open for the public to submit proposals. Correct. And so is the 24 code available to them? Yes, it's available on the iccsafe.org website. Okay, but not, not in through our site. Uh, I believe our site points folks to that or also to Wabo for purchase of the code. Okay. okay. And then you, the report you that we a, just went through today uh, isn't public yet, right? Uh, I mean, it, it's on it's our public. website as well, but it's it's not necessarily in the place where somebody would say these are the reports and this is the the end all say all for what these reports are. Okay. So after we go through the committee and the council um, approval process, 
those will be put into the 2024 code adoption cycle tab and um, linked within those code sections there and for the official report kind of location on our website. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And the link to the ICC codes is under the state codes, regulations, and guidelines and the National Model Code Organizations page for both the ICC codes and the IATMO code. Cool. Thanks. And so, um, Dustin, um, did you remind me again for the chain, co code change proposal? Uh, when is the last day to submit for that? Uh, the 19th of September. Okay, thank you. And we have a seven day turnover. So stuff that comes in um, on the 19th, uh, if we if it's rejected for whatever reason, uh, there'll be seven day kind of grace period after that, that we would allow folks to resubmit. But after that, after that seven days after the 19th, um, any any more submission submissions will be um, officially rejected. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that's a helpful discussion. Lance, did you yeah, have something? It, it, nope. Oh, I just saw you on mic. Sorry. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Yeah. Dustin, is that posted on the state website that shows those those time frames? It should um, be. We have the 2024 code adoption schedule uh, um, posted, and it should show there. Um, and then in our new bylaws, we have the seven days to um, uh, for resubmission of rejected proposals. Okay. Yeah, I just I just couldn't remember. Sorry, I didn't open it up. So just open you you know top of your head. <laughs> so. Yeah, so that schedules on also the 2024 mm -hmm. code adoption tab there. So it's, it should be a link at the top of that page once you get in there. Okay, any other business to discuss? If not, good job, Dustin. Good job, Rosanna, Krista, Tag. That was uh, productive. Well run. Yes. Well, okay, I, with his work as well. <laughs> All right, with that, um, thank you. We're adjourned. All right.